I'm Kay Daigle of Beyond Ordinary Women Ministries. Welcome to our series, Justice in the Bible. And welcome to Nika Spaulding, our special guest, who is sharing with us about justice in the Bible. Nika is the resident theologian at St. Jude Oak Cliff in the Dallas area. And we actually have a number of videos with her. So I hope after this, you will connect with some of our other videos because she always brings a lot of knowledge and a real breadth of understanding of the scripture with her. I guess that's why she's a resident theologian. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Yeah. So Nika, in the first video, we talked about defining justice. Yeah. And in this second video, we're going to talk about Old Testament justice. So tell us about that. What do we see about justice in the Old Testament? Yeah, I love it. One of the things that makes the Old Testament so wildly fascinating for me is that it's full of stories. And we as Christians are meant to read those stories and to pull out of them. You know, sometimes God will just directly say, hey, go and sin no more. And then other times, because God is a unbelievable storyteller, he will show us a story where someone sins and then you see all the brokenness that happens. And so, so many times in the Old Testament, the way that we learn about justice is through God showing us what justice looks like. So for example, you can read stories where there are people who normally would be insignificant, but then we know their names because God is trying to honor and value these people. So my favorite example of this is when Shipra and Pua, who are the, he, the, the maid servants in, or the midwives in the be beginning of Exodus, you have this Pharaoh who God doesn't name. We don't, I mean, we can know Pharaoh's name from archaeology, but God specifically does not name Pharaoh. But he does name these two women who helped save these Hebrew babies that the that Pharaoh wanted killed. And Shipra and Pua, who normally would not be named, normally would be women who don't matter. But God honors them in his stories. And so, so many times you'll see stories in the Old Testament where there's somebody who's an outsider, someone like Ruth, who is a widower, who's a foreigner, who's an out, you know, she's coming into the land and you see God provide for her, protect for her and put her in the lineage of King Jesus. And so, so many times in the Old Testament, how we see justice is we see the way that God deals with the vulnerable, the marginalized, the outsiders, and how God gives them their names, how God exalts them, how God honors them and rewards their faithfulness. Um, and then so many times we see people who receive their due penalty for their injustice, right? I think of the book of Esther, where Haman is this really evil guy, and he's trying to kill all the Israeli Hebrew people, and he builds those huge gallows because he thinks he's going to get to hang someone on it. And wouldn't you know, he ends up being hung on those gallows. And so that's one way that we see justice in the Old Testament. Another really important way that we see justice in the Old Testament is so many times people think that they are given privilege and power and status because they're special or they're good at something or whatever. And what we see in the scriptures overwhelmingly is when God gives someone an opportunity or a gift or a leadership position, it's always for the sake of them bringing about goodness and rightness and justice in the land. And so like, like Abraham, perfect example, right? Everything's going terrible in the Old Testament, right? You've got creation, fall, flood, tower. I mean, it's like, and we're like, and then God says, okay, Abram, I'm going to start with you and I'm going to make your people great. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to give you land, seed, and blessing. It's this unbelievable moment of election where God is going, this guy is my guy and I'm going to make him really special in all the land. And that's a really beautiful story. But what we sometimes miss is in Genesis 18, after God has chosen Abram and he's told him all these amazing things he's going to do for him and how he's going to elevate him into this unbelievable status. In Genesis 18, God says, listen, Abram, I chose you so that you will deal rightly, which if you go back to our first video and you look up those definitions, that's that word Sadaka that we talked about and justly. And that's that word Mishpat that we talked about, that these two things are how I want you to deal with people. So we have this unbelievable gift of status from God to Abram. And then the expectation from God of you will use that not for your own good, not for your own glory but so that you will bring justice and rightness into the land around you. And that's a theme that you will see go through the whole Old Testament, right? You see this with Moses. Moses, go free my people. I'm going to be with you. It's unbelievable. And then God's like, Moses, tell the people that they're going to be my royal priesthood, my holy nation. And Moses is like, awesome. And then the people, of course, say, 
we'll do all that you command us, which they're liars, but that's neither here nor there. And so God's like, I'm going to make you the most incredible people on earth. We're going to have a really special covenantal relationship. And then what does the law say? It says things like protect the vulnerable, make sure that you look after orphans and widows, make sure that you, you don't trample the heads of the poor, make sure that you don't glean all the corners of your field, that you leave some for people that are impoverished, that you forgive debts, that you maintain righteousness and justice in the way that you deal with the land around you. And so this, I mean, you can literally go through the Old Testament. You've got Abram in Genesis, you've got Moses in, in Exodus, and then you look at the, the period of judges and God exalts these judges, people like Deborah and Samson. And in the book of Judges, he says, listen, do not judge people. Do not give a more favorable judgment to those who are rich or those who have power, but always deal justly with people. Again, going back and using those Sadaka and Mishpat words is what we see. And then my favorite part of the Old Testament is you have these kings, right? King David, King Solomon, all these incredible kings. And they're meant to carry with them the actual copy of Deuteronomy. They're supposed to have their own handwritten copy of Deuteronomy. If you go to Deuteronomy 1 and you start reading through Deuteronomy 1, it literally says, this is how you're meant to rule with justice and righteousness like, your, like Yahweh does, the same way that God, because you are a visible representation. And so, so much of justice in the Old Testament is a reminder that if God has given you status, if he's given you power, if he's given you wealth, if he's given you privilege, those are not gifts for you to just bask in and glory in and use for your own good. They are meant to be a reminder to you that you have been given those things from a just and right God who expects you to deal with people in those ways. That whatever position of power and privilege that you have, that you would always deal rightly and justly with those who have less privilege and power than you. And so that's another way that we see justice in the Old Testament. And then Kay, you mentioned this in the first video and I love it. If you want to know what God thinks about injustice, just go read the prophets. I mean, just, and I always tell people, go take the book of Amos and take your little highlighter. And every time you see the word, woe, W-O-E, woe, whatever comes behind it, pay attention because it's what, it tells you what makes God mad. It tells you what God does not delight in. It tells you the things that God is very frustrated with his people about. And what you'll learn is you trample the heads of the poor. I don't like that. You, you harm foreigners. I don't like that. You forsake me and you run after false gods and you, and you pretend like it's okay. And I don't like that. And one of the things that he says in Amos, he says, listen, you forget that I rescued you out of Egypt. You used to be enslaved. You used to be poor. You used to be low status. And I am the one that brought you high. So why are you pushing others down? And God is reminding them, when I brought you out of Egypt, when you were low and I brought you high, it wasn't so that you could push others down. It's so that you could use your newfound freedom to deal justly and rightly with others. And so when people talk about justice and they say, well, you know, is it that important? It seems like an addition to the gospel. It seems like maybe it's just this kind of idea that new people, you know, are talking about. I'm going, no, no, no. It is embedded literally through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Malachi in the Old Testament. And we'll talk in the next video, of course, about the New Testament. But you will see this idea of God caring about justice and him being upset about injustice and him wanting his people to make it right. And you will see it everywhere you look, open your Bible, point your finger and keep reading. And I bet you'll bump into justice at some point very soon in the scriptures. Well, you know, what you, what you were just talking about this, some people see it as an addition. Is that why they use the term social justice and and say that that has nothing to do with the gospel that we're just adding to the gospel with that and is social justice different from what you're talking about biblical justice yeah i think the i think some people mean well in trying to say look the justice of god is such that we were once sinners well we are sinners and jesus paid this price for us and so that the cross is about mercy and justice mingling we deserve the just penalty for sin and jesus paid it but that's too narrow a view of justice is what I'm arguing. And so some people have termed this idea, this bigger, more holistic biblical view of justice. Some people have wrongly just termed it social, social justice and then dismissed it as if to say, hey, there's some people who only care about feeding the homeless and getting clothes on people's backs, but they don't care about salvation. That's those, those just aren't good categories because the reality is, is that if you care about the justice of God, you not only care about poor sinners being saved, evangelism is, is I will make the argument evangelism is both preaching grace and doing justice, because the reality is, is that God is not just concerned about individual salvation. He's concerned about a kingdom 
ethic that he's brought into the world. And so when people talk about social justice, sometimes they use it to dismiss what is really a biblical view of justice, which not only has something to say about my individual relationship with the Father, Son, and Spirit, but it does have something to say for how I relate in the society and with people around me and with my neighbors. And I think what has happened is too many people are too quick to dismiss the Old Testament idea of justice, and they fail to realize that's that's what God wants for us. And so while some people go, oh, well, that's just social justice, that's not important to what God is trying to do here, I'd go, well, I'd caution you there. Because I think if we have a bigger view of what the gospel really is, it's this cosmic restoration of all that we lost in the Garden of Eden. And part of that cosmic restoration is not just our vertical relationship with with the triune. It's these horizontal relationships, which then mean we need to be concerned about the poor, the orphan, the widow. And we'll get to this in the New Testament. But James, the brother of Jesus, literally says, look, this is what true religion is. Looking after orphans and widows in their distress. That is an echo of the Old Testament. What does the law say? Look after orphans, foreigners, widows, the poor, those four categories. God is constantly reminding us how important they are. And so the social justice thing, it's um, being a young person that cares about justice. Sometimes people throw that at me and I'm telling you it's because of my commitment to God. It is because of my love of Jesus. It is because of my love of scripture that I've, I dove into this idea of justice. And what I learned is there's a more comprehensive full life view of justice that's a delight to participate in. Like, I want to care about the things that God cares about. So if God cares about this, then I get to care about the things that God says are important. And I think that's really important for believers to take that seriously as they consider the scriptures and what God would have for them. Right. And and of course, we also see that we're supposed to become more like Jesus, who is justice is in his heart. I mean, this is the heart of God. We can't just ignore issues of justice if we're going to be like Jesus. That's exactly right. We shouldn't make the attributes of God compete to say like, well, what does God care about beauty or goodness? And you go, what? No, God cares about beauty and goodness and justice and love and right. You know, and so we shouldn't make those things compete in the hierarchy of Christian values. So we should all be concerned about justice in the areas of our life where God is calling us into. Well, great. Thank you, Nika. On that note, I will just invite you to join us for the third video, which will be about New Testament justice.